All right, so we got the history of Diablo. Let's write to video. We've been slaying, looting, and clicking through Diablo's procedurally generated. Not me. I just not got into Diablo. Five years. The original Diablo birthed the action RPG genre, and it continued to <coughs> own that formula to become an absolutely giant franchise. To celebrate the launch of Diablo 4, here's a look back at the history of Diablo. Oh, I'm excited. Let's see, man. Let's the 1994 pitch for Diablo is really interesting to go back and 94? read today. The document presented a game that's pretty similar to what we know of as Diablo now. From the beginning, it was always built with replayability in mind, with an emphasis on exploration and experimenting with the game's different classes. But there were key differences. Namely, okay. that Diablo was originally planned to be a turn-based game with permadeath, and that it would be expanded by adding items and quests through expansion packs inspired by Magic the Gathering booster packs. Okay. This project was the baby of developer David Brevik and the team at Condor, but it wasn't in active development. Instead, they were working on Justice League Task Force for Sega. I've never played Justice League ta ta uh, Task Force. At the CES trade show in 1994, they met the team from Silicon and Synapse, okay. who were also working on Justice League Task Force, okay. but this time for Nintendo. Neither developer knew about the other game, but they got to talking anyway. And the Superman vs. The Flash? Devs revealed that they were itching to make their own fantasy PC games. Okay. They all agreed to keep in touch, and after Silicon and Synapse shipped a small game called Warcraft what? and changed their name to Blizzard, Blizzard, reps from the team came to visit Condor to check out Diablo. Blizzard offered Condor $300,000 to make Diablo, but it quickly became apparent that it wouldn't be enough. Condor landed a one million dollar side gig to make a football title for the 3DO M2 console. Yes, sir. And even though the M2 never released, 3DO offered to buy the small studio. This kicked off a bidding war between 3DO and Blizzard, mm. with Condor eventually picking Team Blizzard because their cultures aligned more. In 1996, okay, sense. Condor became Blizzard North, and development on Diablo was full steam ahead. Okay. But Blizzard South had some ideas about the game and urged North to make the game real-time instead of turn-based. Brevik, who was lead programmer, claimed that this would take a lot of work and even got another milestone payment from Blizzard for the trouble. Turns out it was actually pretty easy to do and Brevik ended up doing it in an afternoon. Diablo oh, in one afternoon, enter, okay. If you dare. Diablo is often credited with being the first action RPG and it launched alongside Battle.net, Blizzard's proprietary gaming platform that allows players to control their Blizzard games, connect with others and play together. Diablo's okay. gameplay loop of exploring procedurally generated dungeons, fighting monsters and collecting loot proved to be an irresistible combination. Okay. Three character classes, warrior, rogue and sorcerer added even more variety and the game could even be played online. Admittedly, rampant cheating was a huge issue, but when the game launched, it was a huge critical and People was cheating hit. already? On 9.6 out of 10 reviews stated that if you like PC games, you should go out right now and experience what is likely to be the clone maker for the next two years. Oh, wow. Diablo is often cited as being one of the best PC games ever made, and a version was made for the PS1 by Climax and published by EA in 1998. Hot really? I didn't even know that. I didn't know it went that far back. Diablo, the execs at Blizzard's parent company, Davidson and Associates, were pushing for more content. And despite Blizzard North's objections, another team owned by the conglomerate was given the task of making an expansion and only six weeks in which to do it. After assurance that Blizzard North could executive produce the pack, representatives from the original team met with Synergistic Software to discuss the expansion and provide some guidance as well as house rules. Okay. Blizzard North only allowed Synergistic Software to include one new character class and told them outright that so they So Blizzard North and Diablo's Blizzard South, were they like... Because it would require a complete rebalancing... Did of they the not want to help each other or no? Luckily for the team at Synergistic Software, their deadline was extended to four months and the expansion Hellfire launched in 1997. Okay. It added a new storyline, items and improvements to the game's interface. True to their word, they only added one new character class, the Monk. However, there were two unfinished classes left in the game that could be accessed pretty easily by tweaking the command.txt file, the Bard and the Barbarian. Oh, so you, 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 have, you have to finesse it, basically. That's all I'm hearing. Clear that the sequel was bigger and more complex than the original. Bro, Diablo is old. Was no longer relegated to its dungeons. Diablo 2 had an overworld with more varied environments. Improvements were made to its storytelling. Crucially, quests were no longer random and instead linked together to tell a more cohesive tale across its four acts. 
At launch, there were five character classes instead of three. Amazon, Necromancer, Barbarian, Sorceress, and like Paladin. Kratos. And three difficulty levels. There's also a hardcore mode that introduces permadeath for your character. Diablo 2's quirkiest addition to the franchise is undoubtedly a hidden cow level. By transmuting specific items, a portal would appear what type that would of take demon? players to the secret cow well, level. Well, that's the game. Okay, let me not. That's, that's literally the game. The cow, king. the cow level goes back as early as the original Diablo, when an online hoax led people to believe that it existed in the original game. Synergistic huh. software threw a reference to it in the Hellfire expansion, accessed once again by tweaking the command.txt file. Diablo 2 was designed with much more emphasis on cooperative multiplayer, working to fix the cheating issues that plagued the original game by introducing <laughs> open of course people and were cheating, bro. realms. It's a PC Although game. the cheating issues weren't solved entirely, there was definitely some improvement. There's also a ladder system for multiplayer, where characters would be reset at the end of a season to allow players to play on equal footing. Diablo 2 flew okay. off the shelves when it launched in 2000, and despite being criticized for its dated graphics, I can't like I'll be heated though. If, like if I earned all this stuff and then like they Diablo just reset it at the end. Was released in 2021 that updated the game's graphics, but if you yearn for that 2000s aesthetic, you could swap to. I can't lie, the remake actually looks pretty good. Button. A year after Diablo 2's launch, an expansion was released. This time developed by the original team at Blizzard North. On top of new items and gameplay mechanics like more control over hirelings, it added a fifth act to the game's story and a new demonic boss to battle. Bar. Okay. Lord of Destruction also added two new character classes: the Druid and the Assassin. We gave it an eight. She like Ronda Rousey. Reviewer Greg Kasavin saying that the expansion offers plenty of new features, enough to make you spend at least as much time with the expansion as you have with the original game. That's rare coming from games uh, now. Dang, so it's been 12 years since, since they dropped the new, since they dropped uh, a Diablo game. After the enormous success of Diablo 2, the team at Blizzard North began work on Diablo 3. Speaking to IGN, Blizzard North co-founder Eric Schaefer revealed that it was a vastly different game. It was a true MMO with a stronger faction and PvP focus, but mm. it was still in early development, and really, I don't remember much about it. After some conflict with Blizzard's then-owner Vivendi, many key talent from Blizzard North, including David Brevik and the other co-founders, departed from the studio. Blizzard oh, wow. North's Diablo 3 was cancelled, and the studio closed down in 2005. Blizzard South in Irvine took the lead, with Fallout co-creator Leonard Boyarsky acting as the game's lead world designer and Company of Heroes Jay Wilson as game director. Flash okay. forward to 2008, and at the Blizzard Worldwide Invitational in Paris, Blizzard revealed Diablo 3 to the world. Hey, I mean, I meant how excited they were, uh, uh, how excited they Set must be, bro. 20 years after the events of Diablo 2, Diablo 3 has you play as the Nephilim, offspring of a. They, I think this is the one where they had like cutscenes and stuff too, right? Yeah. Onto the cathedral near Tristram. Yes, the very same cathedral that once concealed Diablo's soulstone in the original game. Launching with five classes, with an additional two coming in later expansions, Diablo 3 was widely praised upon release for refining the franchise's compelling gameplay. Oh my god! <laughs> he just went for it, bro! The controls are responsive and pleasurable. The diversity of character classes and skill customization options is impressive, and the constant stream of gold and treasure you earn is irresistible. Diablo oh, has the recipe for crafting a habit-forming, loot-driven action RPG down to Okay, I, agree. I can agree with and that. Diablo 3, the results of that recipe are more exciting and more addictive than they've ever been. While the core gameplay was solid, Diablo 3's launch was nothing short of disastrous. The game requires players to be connected to the internet at all times. That's the worst. Even when playing alone. That's the worst. At launch, when hundreds of thousands of players were eager to head back to Sanctuary, they were presented with the most horrifying thing imaginable. <laughs> While the development team worked tirelessly That's the worst. to implement a fix to the servers, players review bombed the game on Metal I'm actually going to say something about that at the end of the video. The official Blizzard forums. Even after the server issues were sorted, it wouldn't be the end of Diablo 3's woes, thanks to the implementation of its controversial auction house, an online storefront where players could exchange oh, in-game yeah. gold or real-world money for items. Blizzard's reasoning for the auction yeah. house was to legitimize third-party trading to prevent players from being scammed by third-party sites. Oh. Unfortunately, it was met with a lot of criticism because, of course, Blizzard were taking a cut. <laughs> players accused the game of having pay-to-win aspects, and the auction That's, house. That's okay. That was every game later. at that time, now we want you to know especially that 2012. The money auction house and the gold auction house 
will be shut down on March 18th, 2014. It actually took so long to be taken offline because Blizzard were concerned that they would open the company up to legal action because the auction house was listed as a feature on the back of the box. Despite some missteps, Diablo 3 would be an enormous success and to celebrate I mean, yeah, I imagine the game is amazing. Blizzard I can't lie. Diablo 3 is a really good game. Players since launch, it came to PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in 2013, PS4 and Xbox One the following year, and even to the Nintendo Switch in 2018. I didn't even know it came Diablo to the Switch, I'll be real. ports would be widely praised for managing to effectively translate the game's PC controls to controller. But I, yeah, I, I'll Diablo listen, I have something to say about that though. Reaper of Souls was released in 2014. On top of adding new story content and quality of life updates, the expansion also added a number of gameplay features, including seasons, new dungeons called Nephilim Rifts, the defensive crusade. Okay, now that actually like really good gameplay for some reason. I don't know why. 70. It also added adventure mode where players could complete bounties for rewards in every region of the map. Reaper of Souls reviewed well and sold almost three million copies in its first week. And a new army oh, I, I don't never. Why is it the of the DLC Necro what? For Diablo 3 in 2017. I've never played Rise that one before. The Necromancer's biggest feature was the introduction of Yeah, I've never played this one before. I'll keep it real. Necromancer class and not much else. Its release coincided with a free patch that introduced challenge rifts and new bounties to the game, but still people were pretty cheesed off that they had to shell out $15 for a character class with no new story content to go along uh, with it. Okay. BlizzCon. We love Diablo. During the BlizzCon 2018 <laughs> opening ceremony, Wyatt Cheng took to the main stage to talk about the future of Diablo. Fans eagerly anticipating a new mainline entry were surprised to hear that the next game would actually be a free-to-play mobile and PC title called Diablo Immortal. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? <laughs> To Blizzard's credit, they had tried to preempt the announcement by telling people not to raise their hopes too much, but when has that ever stopped the internet from overreacting to things? True. Co developed with NetEase, the Chinese company that published a number of Blizzard games in China, including I'll Diablo keep it real, I never played Diablo, Diablo Immortal. Immortal. As a full Even though Diablo, RPG, I didn't know that Diablo, Diablo was a mobile game though. Three. Our reviewer Alessandro Barbosa praised the game's touch controls, how it looked, and how it evolved the Diablo formula, but criticized the late to end game content, where progression would slow significantly, necessitating paying for the best in game items using real world money. Yeah. One such player, YouTuber JT is all business, spent $100,000 on in game items, Jeez. but found out very quickly that it's lonely at the top. He tried to find a PvP match between 48 and 72 hours and couldn't find anyone to play. Okay. Blizzard eventually uh, issued I'm, a fix. Listen, I understand that Despite though. Despite criticisms of its microtransactions, Diablo Immortal earned $100 million in its first eight weeks. Oh my In November my God. 2022, Activision Blizzard ended its long-term partnership with NetEase, suspending game services in mainland China. A NetEase executive even publicly wrote on his LinkedIn that the relationship broke down due to a jerk at Activision Blizzard. Blizzard games such as World of Warcraft and Overwatch are no longer able to be purchased in the country, but Diablo Immortal, which was covered by a separate agreement, is still available. Which brings us to Diablo. I mean, you guys never know, like, you know, what people are like, you know, behind the gaming, After you know, Immortal's behind the gaming world, bro. Honestly, you never Blizzard know. 2018, Blizzard pulled out all the stops at 2019's show, offering the first look at the brand new entry in the series. This Diablo 4 is a huge success in my, in my book, bro. Featuring the game's it is. Bad. Lilith. Set 30 years after Reaper of Souls, the demon Lilith has been summoned to Sanctuary, and in classic Diablo fare, it's your job to take her out. The biggest changes to Diablo 4 include its open world, and after it didn't meaningfully materialize in Diablo 3, PvP. Its overworld can be freely explored, and after completing the story, is even shared with other players online, meaning that you might see others running around bad, in Hold public up. events, like boss fights. Also, after completing a certain amount of the game, you get access to a mount, which makes traversing around much easier. Our reviewer Alessandro Barbosa gave it an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10? Diablo 4 at this time cannot escape comparison to the past of the franchise it belongs to. But it's thankfully True. a game that has been crafted with a strong awareness of what made each one either revered or reviled. 
It represents a measured approach to combining the many elements from previous entries that worked into a system that feels Sorry, y'all. Hold on. I'm writing down notes. Sorry about that, y'all. Action role playing. We have plenty more on Diablo 4 right here on GameSpot. So okay. make sure you tune in to check it all out. Thank you so much for watching. I'm on Twitter at Lucy James Games, and I'll see you all next right. time for more history of. Here's what I gotta say about this, right? Here's my thing. I just literally had to write down notes so I could like keep aware of everything because uh, throughout the whole video, I was trying to like, okay, like here's what I'm gonna talk about at the end of the video. This is what I'm gonna talk about at the end of the video. So I had like a bunch of things to talk about at the end of the video. Okay, here. Listen, Diablo 4, in my opinion, uh, was a huge success. And uh, this is coming from, uh, you know, a person that's, you know, very new to Diablo. Obviously, I think I, I noticed, I think I knew what Diablo, like the game Diablo was. And around 2017, 2016, 2017, I knew what Diablo was. It's an, I never played it. Um, but yeah, I, I think Diablo 4 is a, is, a, is a really good game. If we're talking about just the, from like a cinematic point of view, from like the, the cutscenes, everything like that, 10 out of 10. I'm a big cutscenes dude. Uh, that's just who I am. Uh, a lot of people don't really care about cutscenes. They only care about the, uh, the gameplay. Some people are longtime fans for me. Uh, one thing that attracted me to Diablo was the cutscenes. I know the cutscenes wasn't always there for Diablo. You know, even first of all, I didn't know that Diablo was like that, like old. Well, obviously it's not. Well, for a video game, twenty plus years is old. Okay, let's keep it real. Like Mario, old. Uh, Diablo, didn't even though it started in the nineteen nineties, old. Uh, a game like Mortal Kombat, old. Uh, not because, and don't think that when I say a game is old, don't think that it's a bad thing. I'm just saying like, you know, whenever it started and like the fact that it's still continuing is a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but, um, but yeah, Diablo four is a really, really, really good game. In my opinion, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's it for Diablo four. Um, the second thing I put was micro transactions. So the whole thing about the whole micro transaction thing about people spending money on the game and, you know, to make it fair and all this and all that. Right. At the end of the day, man, microtransactions, and, and this was a big problem, uh, 2012, 2013, uh, especially if, um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but, um, when they used to have like FIFA, right? I remember, um, like a lot of FIFA YouTubers, I'm not going to say no names, but a lot of FIFA YouTubers would promote third party, uh, FIFA coin, like selling, like, you know, websites, you know, um, you know, obviously the website would, you know, will pay the YouTuber, you know, this certain amount of money to uh you know to you know to promote the website or you know some fifa youtubers will create their own website you know uh fifa coin website you know so you know so at the end of the day that's the whole microtransactions thing where you know players are spending their you know in real life money to get um to get you know items in a game or to get um uh, virtual currency um you know at the end of the day do i think it's a bad thing Yes and no, okay, because I can't lie. It really depends on the game. It is. It, it really depends on the game. Um, I feel like a game like a game like Diablo, where you know you can you can buy stuff in the game. Well, no, no, no. Well, back then, the game like Diablo, whenever you can buy stuff in the game, I guess was pretty cool. What's another? What's a game? Okay, hold up. Okay, let's go NBA Two K for example. Right, a lot of people. A lot of YouTubers, that's my thing. Here's my thing. That's my thing. A lot of YouTubers and people in real life, they don't have the same type of money, especially the, a lot of the popular YouTubers and uh, a regular 15-year-old kid do not have the same type of money. So if you were to go on YouTube, right, you see your favorite NBA 2K player and he has like 99 Michael Jordan, 99 LeBron James, 99 Stephen Curry, right? Like this team is just godly. Obviously, you know, he paid a lot of money uh, either to, to get packs or he literally pay, uh, paid for the card. Um, so literally he took some of his in real life money uh, and turned it into VC or like, you know, Turn into VC and then either bought the card or uh, bought packs. Why you see? Why you think um back then when uh FIFA pack openings was a big thing? Why do you think you know these YouTubers had um uh like one million, two million, three million uh FIFA coins? Obviously they paid for them. Uh, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Obviously you know and since you're a content creator, you know something like that. You know if you have the funds for it, you know um a pack opening back then or you know. Uh, FIFA, FIFA coins, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Like that was, you know, that was content, but to the regular person, you know, here's how I see it, right? If I was the 15 year old, 
first of all, no, if I was a content creator, I am a content creator, right? Let's say I uh, I did FIFA. Let's say I played NBA 2K, FIFA, whatever. And I want to do a pack opening. I know that in order for me to this the success of me getting the popular uh, of me getting like the like the best card that's like out this week, right? Um, I'm gonna have to put some of my money in. I'm not gonna get the best card this week by having two thousand um, uh, FIFA FIFA points or or FIFA coins. No, I do know that at the end of the day, that a lot of these kids that watch my videos don't have that type of money to just spend right for content at all. Right. Some people, you know, some uh, some 15 year olds, some 16 year olds, you know, they play the game all day, you know, so they, you know, stack up their coins. But let's be let, let's be real. They're not going to get eight million, 10 million coins just from playing all day unless you do some type of glitch or something like that. But other than that, like that is literally the only people you will see ever having like 10 million coins or this certain amount of money. And in, uh, in a game is content creators, streamers, whatever. OK, like th th of, of those sorts. But in real life, you know, if you think about, you know, like people that are like, you know, in the bedroom playing a game like all day, whatever. They don't really have the money to like, you know, buy all these coins, whatever. Just like the YouTuber in this video. She uh, she mentioned uh, a YouTuber that uh, that spent over one hundred thousand uh, dollars of his own in real life money on Diablo. And then he tries to search for um, an opponent. He couldn't even get an opponent for what? Three days. Like she said, well, I think she's like 48 hours or 72 hours, whatever. Bro, he couldn't even get an opponent, bro, because his team or his character was so like high level that he literally couldn't get an opponent, bro. So I would say that's that's the bad thing about, you know, microtransactions that you could be so high up and so high level um, that, you know, no one's going to play with you. Or if you do match with somebody, let's say NBA 2K, for example, let's say you have a 99 99 team across the board, 99 Steph Curry, 99 LeBron James, whatever you have a 99 team stacked across the board, bro. If I have, let's say I have a regular gold team or I have a gold team and I have um, a, a 90 overall LeBron and I got 78, I don't know, Carmelo Anthony, 77, somebody. I just got a whole, whole gold team. And then I match with a dude that is a 99 overall in all five positions on, on his team. Oh, on my life, I'm unplugging the console. Who do you think? What? So at the end of the day, right? Some people, you know, some people are, are you know, are going to stay and play against them. For me, I'm not about to suffer that butt whooping. I'm out. I'm unplugging a console. Yeah. What? And then and most people are going to are going to do the same thing that I'm doing because like, you know, obviously that person paid for his team. So at the end of the day, you know, what's the point? I'm going to lose. He has like the highest, you know, rated uh, basketball players in the game. So I'm, I'm going to lose. So at the end of the day, when it comes down to these microtransactions, bro, it, honestly, it depends on the game it is, because there are some games that um, that has uh, microtransactions that are really, really, really successful. Uh, for example, Fortnite. Fortnite, bro. Oh, my. but here's the thing, though, right? When it comes to Fortnite and their microtransactions, I think. I think it's still fair, though. That's the thing. I think they came up with a thing to where obviously the the, the microtransactions that they have in their game is uh, is their skins, okay. And either way, it's still fair because let's say for example, let's say Chung Lee, right? <laughs> let's say Chung Lee, right? Chung Lee is in Fortnite, right? Let's say I buy Chung Lee, even though I bought the newest skin, right? That doesn't mean that I'm still better than a person w with 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 a no skin. Let's keep it real, right? That doesn't mean that I'm better than a person with no skin. They can still absolutely mollywop me with, with me with my Chung Lee. I can have Chung Lee, the newest character. It doesn't matter. This person can have a no skin and still destroy me, one pump me like it's crazy. So at the end of the day, I think again, it depends on what game it is. Fortnite is a perp, bro. Honestly, bro. It's really smart how they did that because Fortnite is a really is the perfect game because when it comes down to it, they make a lot of extra money from their their skins. Honestly, honestly, I think they they make most money from their skins because, bro, if you think about it, bro, that is the perfect thing. It doesn't matter. You can you can buy the the new the newest skin. The newest skin is not. I mean, obviously, it might have like a few um a few more um 
more uh, advantages when it comes down to the like when it comes down to like to the to the actual like to the actual character. Sorry that I'm stuttering. Uh, for example, like Goku or Vegeta or Beerus. Obviously, you could do the Kamehameha, or you could do uh, or you could like fly on like his Nimbus and stuff like that. So yeah, when it comes down to that, then yeah. But other than that, bro, anybody else can do the Kamehameha. You could actually pick it up like off the ground in Fortnite. So at the end of the day, Fortnite has made it fair. And they've they've made a way to actually like make like a, a lot of extra money, you know, from you know uh, people buying skins and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, uh, microtransactions has always been a problem, bro. Since twenty thirteen, it's been it's been a really 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 big problem. Um, but it also you know it's been a huge success for a lot of different video games. So at the end of the day, it's one of those things to where it's like, it, like you can't really, <laughs> you can't really like just like throw it off honestly it's 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 a good thing and also it's a bad thing because it you can lose your audience you know from a you know if you're a video game developer right if you're ever watching this whatever all i would say is right from a consumer or from a you know from a person that plays video games right that play games that has microtransactions in it my advice to you guys would be um try to man i would say look at fortnite Look at what they're doing, bro. You know, I'm not saying, you know, do what they're doing, but I'm saying like, that's a perfect example. If you, if you ever want to make some, some money off of microtransactions, bro, look at Fortnite. They are doing it the perfect way, the perfect way. So, you know, um, other than that, that was my long rant. This is, this video was very long, by the way. So, uh, yeah, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. What do you guys think about this? Because, uh, it seems like Diablo had a really long history of just people falling out uh, people, you know, collaborating, you know, just a lot of different things. But um, but yeah, Diablo Four is is a really, really, really good game. I think they, I think they did a, a really good job, you know, with Diablo Four, and um, and I think it was a huge success. Um, I don't even know. Listen, I'll keep it real. I did not play the mobile game. Honestly, I stopped playing mobile games a long time ago. But that's just me. Um, other than that, comment down below again. What do you guys think of um, of this video? And uh, yeah, I actually want to get you guys a pin on this because I don't know. Here's my question to you guys: Are microtransactions bad? I, th I me, I'm gonna say yes and no. I'm gonna say yes and no. But yeah, comment down below. What do you guys think of microtransactions? I'm gonna see you guys later. For the next one, I'm out and.